In a post-Brexit UK, what can you buy for £600? A new iPhone 7, but nothing higher than the cheapest 32GB model. Maybe a holiday to Greece. Heck, my annual car MOT plus service and repairs somehow always magically hit this figure. Or, you can spend £600 on this Hisense N6800 50-inch 4K HDR TV. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Thieu and I review and calibrate TVs for a living. Today, we are going to take a look at the Hisense H50 N6800 television, which, if nothing else, rolls off the tongue much easier than the company's TV model numbers from a few years ago. First things first, this is a new 2017 4K LED LCD that does HDR for only £600. £600. So you have to be realistic in your expectations. Its picture quality is never going to match more expensive LED LCDs near the £1000 mark, let alone OLED TVs that cost much more. The Hisense N6800 is not without its merits, but let me first explain its shortcoming that is a direct result of trying to build a TV this cheap. For a start, the Hisense N6800, at least the 50-inch version I have here, uses a 60Hz panel. This has two consequences. One, even though there's a blur reduction control in the user menu, it actually doesn't increase motion resolution beyond the sample and hold baseline of 300 lines according to this horizontally scrolling test pattern. In fact, none of the ultra smooth motion options increases motion resolution. Selecting clear, standard or smooth will just increase the smoothness but introduce noticeable interpolation artifact and soap opera effect or SOE to 24 frames per second movies. Another downside of using a 60Hz panel is that 24 frames per second film will exhibit mild telecynic judder, because 60 is not fully divisible by 24. Had a 120Hz panel been used, 5.5 pulldown could have been applied to achieve natively smooth 24 frames per second playback during slow panning shots. Of course, the further you sit from the television, the less noticeable the judder you'll see. You can also engage ultra smooth motion to smooth out the judder, but that will make film look like video. Moving on, the viewing angle of the Hisense N6800 is very narrow. It uses a VA type LCD panel whose viewing angle is not expected to be good anyway. But blacks and colors really do drop off, even beyond 15 to 20 degrees off axis, both vertically and horizontally you really need to make sure you sit directly in front of the TV and at eye level to get the best picture. Because of this very limited viewing angle, if you sit too close to the television, the sides will actually start glowing and look brighter than the middle of the screen in a dark room, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of using a VA LCD panel for its deeper blacks. One of these days, I'll have to get a budget IPS LCD TV in to review and see whether it gives a better overall viewing experience. The Hisense N6800 is an H-lit LED LCD TV, and based on our thermal scan, there's only one strip of LED modules along the bottom border of the panel to illuminate the entire screen. This is a very common LED configuration found on most entry-level and mid-range HDR LED LCDs, even the Samsung Q7 and Q8 use this type of LED placement. Although there's a local dimming function in the user menu, the TV only has frame dimming or global dimming in that the whole screen, rather than individual zones, will dim down or light up, which means simultaneous contrast is not boosted in any meaningful manner. Enabling local dimming also introduces visible brightness fluctuations, especially during fade-in and out from black, so we advise you just turning it off. For HDR, the peak brightness on our Hisense H50 N6800 review sample only reached around 405 nits on a 10% window in the most accurate HDR picture mode. Peak brightness on a full-field widescreen is also 405 nits. To Hisense credit, the N6800 actually tone maps 1000 nit HDR content quite well to its 400 nit peak brightness capability, so you'll get a decent amount of pop while retaining most bright highlight detail. It's with HDR material that are graded to 4000 nits that the TV struggles, such as Ultra HD Blu-rays like Batman vs Superman and 4K HDR games like Horizon Zero Dawn. The tone mapping algorithm 
tries to preserve as much specular highlight detail as possible within the TV's 400 nit peak brightness limitation, therefore lowering the overall APL or average picture level, causing the whole picture to look too dark. You can increase contrast to boost overall brightness which will blow out highlight detail. This in itself we don't really mind, since on a display with relatively low peak brightness, you'll have to choose between preserving overall brightness or bright highlight detail anyway. But the problem with increasing contrast on the Hisense N6800 is that colors will look overblown very quickly. At a contrast value that you get a beneficial improvement to overall brightness, unfortunately, faces will also turn jaundiced. Right, so is the Hisense N6800 good at anything at all? Quite a few things actually. One, Input lag is 33 milliseconds not only in 1080p SDR mode if you select the PC slash game picture preset, but also in 4K HDR game mode. While not the quickest on the market, 33 milliseconds is definitely very playable for all but the most demanding of Twitch gamers. 2. The design is more upmarket than what you would expect from a 600 pound television with slim bezel that's finished in brushed metallic gunmetal grey and even features some chamfering along the side trims. And as I mentioned in my unboxing video, there are two handles on the back of the Hisense N6800 that makes lifting the TV from the box so painless. The connections are found on the left side of the display. There are four HDMI inputs, but only HDMI 1 and 2 are HDMI 2.0 ports that can do HDR and go up to 4K at 60Hz. And you'll need to go into the user menu and switch from standard format to enhanced format before your 4K Blu-ray player will recognize the TV as 4K HDR capable and send out the relevant 4K HDR signal. It's very unlikely that people buying a 600 pound TV will be paying 300 pound more to get it professionally calibrated. But the calibration controls are well designed and we particularly like that it's easy to switch between different white balance intervals without a full screen menu coming up and disrupting our measurements. If you press the info button on the remote, a banner shows up on top of the screen telling you the resolution, frame rate, whether it's interlaced or progressive, whether it's HDR or not. It's surprising how many manufacturers actually don't display all this important information. Video processing on this TV is good with clean and reasonably sharp upscaling. As mentioned before, the TV tone maps 1008 HDR content quite impressively with no exaggeration of posterization. Okay, let's sum up. The Hisense N6800 is a decent TV for watching SDR. That's standard dynamic range, not standard definition rubbish. And HDR content that's mastered to 1000 nits. Many of the drawbacks, such as 60Hz native refresh rate, narrow viewing angle, 400 nit peak brightness, are due to the VA LCD panel used, which is likely unavoidable when you are trying to hit a retail price point of £600 for a 50 inch screen that can do 4K and HDR. Hisense has some good things going, nice upscaling, well thought out grayscale controls. So we'll be interested to see the Chinese brand put these positive attributes to use on a better panel, such as the upcoming NU9700 with quantum dot and full array local dimming backlighting. If you found this video useful, please smash the like button. And I would always welcome any new subscriber if you haven't already subscribed to the HDTV Test YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.